Praise God. It's my distinct joy to share with you the history of the Smith Method. You know, I started playing guitar back when I was 15 years of age. And we just kind of formed a band playing some uh, surfer music, which back in the mid-1960s was, um, you know, that was an okay thing to do because our neighbor kids were doing it. Other was a lot of people were just forming bands, so it was just something that boys did during that time. And and uh, our band actually worked, and we kind of were able to start playing professionally at the age of 15. Now, when we were rehearsing, um, kids from the neighborhood would kind of come over and watch us rehearse, and some of them wanted to learn how to play guitar. So um, I started experimenting with uh, showing them how to play. And that kind of got me into lessons. Now this led a little bit further down a couple years later to uh, working at Hal Leonard Music in Winona, Minnesota, where they had a music store at that time. And uh, so I was happy to teach there for a couple of years and then moved to a home teaching practice. And while teaching in my home um, at that time, I think I was maybe a freshman or sophomore in college, so that would be about nine, 19 years of age. I had a family come from quite a ways away. I think they drove 45 miles or something like that. And they had a six-year-old and a four-year-old, both boys. They wanted to play the guitar. I said, okay, well, I'll help you learn how to play. So I started um, looking at guitar methods that were available for children at that time and started using them with the children. And I tried my darndest for, I don't know, six, nine months, something like that. They kept coming back and the boys just couldn't make too much progress and it was too hard. And, you know, they were using a still string guitar and playing with a pick and they were trying to make things work. And uh, we were missing a lot of things. And so that ended in failure. And, but it made me wonder, why can't the children learn how to play? Because I saw at um, the college that I was studying at in Monona that um, there were piano players, kids playing piano successfully. And then I became aware of something called the Suzuki method, which was brand new hitting the States at that time. And so you had wonderful young violinists learning how to play. And I had the good fortune of going up to the Twin Cities to a, a place called the Guild of Performing Arts is in the Cedar Riverside Avenue at that time and um, there was a guitar master class going on and you know we had some, some really good players up there Sharon Isbin and Tony Hauser and others were playing in this master class and I got a chance to observe it and watch it and after discussing with some of the people in the crowd I was able to go to McPhail and observe um, a violin lesson of a teacher at McPhail. So I got to see firsthand kind of what the standards were um, for and how to approach teaching violin to young children. I thought, well, the same thing should be able to be done for guitar. And little did I know that I would end up teaching at McPhail later. It was a, a mystery to me coming from a small town. So that was, that was good. Um, so I spent the next uh, couple of years or more experimenting on my own with how to teach uh, guitar to children. And I kind of had some things in mind and a whole little thing to try out. When in 1974, I was actually offered the position to uh, start a guitar program at McPhail. The, um, they had had guitar there in the past in previous years, but they didn't. Uh, they didn't the teacher had retired and hadn't had anything at that point at all. So I started with no students and was able to build it up over the years to um, a full-time job for myself and several other guitar teachers. And one of the things that we did was we used my methods and developed those methods for teaching guitar to children. And at our high point, we had about 125 uh, different children from the ages of 6 to 12 that were in our children's program, all using uh, materials that I had developed. 
These included songs that we would play, and then they also included the methods of how I would put those songs together, which is really important because the students really took off with, with uh, good progress. And then how to read music, and then be able to go to any style of playing music, because they had to be open for classical music, um, pop music, and so forth. Um, so, um, after we had this successful program going, um, eventually led to the um, a publication of a, a book of mine, which was in print for a couple of years before it's been out of print, but at the time it did quite well. And I went around to different professional organizations and colleges and universities. So, for example, we went to the Guitar Foundation of America, the American String Teachers Association, the Music Educators National Conference, and even the European Guitar Teachers Association, presenting on my methods of how to teach uh, guitar to children. And the results of that were not so much that other teachers picked up exactly in what I did, but many, uh, there were some who, who did. Um, but it inspired people to begin children's guitar programs. And um, so that was very rewarding to me. And now, uh, in about 1985, uh, things were restructured. The relationship between the University of Minnesota and McPhail was restructured, and that affected my position. And uh, I was no longer able to stay there, so I had to leave. And uh, that kind of ended the children's guitar program at that point, at least my involvement with it. And um, then my partner and I, Jack McNally, and I started uh, what became McNally Smith College of Music. A story for another day. At any rate, I'm hoping that um, the things that I'll have to show you um, are things that you can use, whether you're a teacher, a parent, or a child, that um, no matter what method you're teaching, you can uh, take from this and learn what you, you can from it. Take care. God bless.